are sudden motions, Mr. President. Just stay where you are. Now, ladies, one of my bid for this fine old antique. What is it, Tom? I like to take it's only one of its kind, but there's five more down there in the cellar just like it. What kind of incubator is, Mr. President? That's right. Mr. President, he's real good with chicks. Keeps the incubator in, in the cellar. In case it's a cyclone or anything, so they won't get their feathers well. And down there with him, he's got enough corn mash to keep them chickens saucy. Now it's Doomsday. What is it, Tom? It's a still. That's what it is. A still for making moonshine. Still. Ain't no one king of Southland. Pretty hard to make a killing in chickens these days, ain't it, Mr. President? Now with these sidelines, you ladies are about to help keep one going. This little friend of mine. Oh, yes, really? Well, I heard you say, Mr. President. <laughs> Snuffing up seven easy. There's a reason why, after 100 channels destroyed, Angel Snuffing up seven is still here. There's a reason why nobody want to get in a beat with Angel Snuffing up seven. If you don't take me seriously, and now your ass is barbecue.
We are in a state of emergency. Want to show him about it? Like a hit? Here you go. Freedom Everybody who is black and interested in black people, let us sit down and find out how we can get together in one direction against one enemy and accomplish this job overnight. When soul singer and black activist Sam Cook wrote the lyrics to his song, A Change Is Gonna Come, it was very direct and to the point. With some changes to it, the song was still digestible. In the year 2019, Black folks continue to go through the change rather than direct the change. A community activist named Tariq Ibn Rod has made an appeal similar to what Sam Cooke was asking for. A change. It's said that the meat shall inherit the earth. We ask when. When will the landlords give the meek a free lease? Mr. Edmondrod is humbly asking for the state of Mississippi. This is Dusty Basement Studios, and we approve of this message. The Mississippi campaign represents everything that you claim that you want. The beginning of an all-black independent nation. The ability to control your own resources. Your politics. The law. Be able to do your own thing for a change. Creating an, an economy. Create and produce goods that Africa or anybody on the planet would want. You're afraid you don't want to do nothing. Three hours talking about the Mississippi campaign.
am to assume that I'm a person looking to uh, get down with this Mississippi campaign. How, how does one get started with this? Sir? <laughs> Mr. Angel Stumpno. What was the question again? I didn't Y'all made me goddamn go old school. Uh, I'm I'm you still didn't answer the question, sir. No, didn't. He still didn't answer the question. You still, you still didn't answer the question, sir. Where it goes, nobody knows. Where it goes, you gotta allow a child to grow up. Some people spoil their children. They won't let them grow up. 
They keep, no matter how old they get, they keep letting, they want to do things for the child. Let your child grow up. Let these black people grow up. Say it again, you've been had. You've been took. You've been hoodwinked. Damn boozled. Let us stray. Run on up. This is what he does. Oh, I say it, I say it again. You've been had. You've been took. You've been hoodwinked. Damn boozled. Let us stray. Run on up. This is what he does. Oh, I say it, I say it again, you've been had, you've been took, you've been hoodwinked, bamboozled, let us stray, run on up, this is what he does.
Good afternoon, good afternoon. How is everybody out there in YouTube land? Good afternoon on a uh, Sunday. In fact, this is Easter Sunday. And it is very religious-fied, so to speak. We all, or so many, are observing uh, the Passover, Easter. They are observing Ramadan. An incredible time for the major religions of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Out of respect for these belief systems, I hope not to offend anyone. Unfortunately, you can get in trouble for telling the truth. Unfortunately, when you tell the truth, it can draw to you hate, dislike, anger, and even thoughts of murder. Welcome to our Easter Sunday sermon. <laughs> shout out to Mellow Cap, shout out to the Deacons of Reality, shout out to all those who support this platform. I thank you so much on this Easter Sunday that you would join us for this particular topic. And on this day when you could be out with your family looking for Easter eggs. <laughs> oh, thank you, Mello. Happy Easter to my Facebook people. I do not mean to ignore you. It's very difficult for me to simulcast and watch Facebook and YouTube at the same time. But believe me, you are not forgotten. You are not forgot. Shout out to my Facebook family out there. I appreciate it. I appreciate everybody. It is an honor that you are that you would allow me to uh, come in your home and give me a listen instead of just throwing me out. <laughs> At least you give me a chance to talk. Some people don't even give me a chance to talk. I can't even start good and then get out of here. <laughs> I remember when I was in the Nation of Islam, as soon as they see me coming down the sidewalk, people start closing their door. <laughs> people start closing their doors, put out the dog, don't come in my yard. <laughs> people saw me. So here we are on this Easter this Easter weekend, and unfortunately, it is not peaceful. I believe there have been two, two mass shootings during uh, Easter weekend. I know one in South Carolina and another one somewhere else. And even among the believers, when you listen to them on Facebook and interact with them. This is Ramadan. This is Easter. But some of these religious folks are so hateful, they cannot, they cannot even maintain themselves for a month. They cannot maintain themselves for a weekend. They are cussing people out, vulgar, nasty, in the name of God, because you offend God. You cannot even maintain peace during your holiday. No respect for your God, no respect for your teaching. So we have to conclude that many of these people are hypocrites. They are fakes. 
the Palestinians are throwing rocks at people. The Israelis over there and Israelis are shooting smoke canisters at them. It's just, <laughs> it's a messed up situation in the name of God. If you cannot find peace, With the within the holy days of Ramadan and, and Easter, then there can be no peace. Again, with all due respect to these belief systems, Judaism and uh, Islam and Christianity. I hope that our message does not offend. That is not my intent. My intent is to make a point. It is not to offend. <clears throat> Do you know Do you know that they do not like angels snutting up seven? Do you know they hate angels snutting up seven? There are people who try to be uh, cordial and civil with me, but it's very difficult for them to do that because. <clears throat> I represent the real truth. And what I have to say, my observations and my conclusions interfere with something they've become very loyal to. Because I've done nothing to them. I've done nothing to nobody except speak what I know is and what I call real truth. These same people, they would tell you they represent the truth. And as long as you're talking about somebody else, go ahead, snuff nub, you all right. Teach that truth. Tell them how it is. But when it's their turn, the clapping stops. Because in their mind, ain't nothing wrong with me. And maybe you have some strong points. Maybe you have a little bit of truth, the plain truth, but you don't have the real truth. You don't except reality. So when somebody like us come in their midst, they don't know how to handle it because they have an attitude of, I already know. You can't tell me nothing. I have the supreme wisdom. I got the knowledge. I, I done my research. I, I got the information. So, Angel Snubbing Up Seven brings dislike from them because I challenge what you're loyal to. And you're the kind of person, and these are the type of people that cannot say, I don't know. We can easily say on this platform, uh, well, you got me. I, I don't know. They cannot do that. They must give you an answer because they are the all-knowing. They are connected to the all-knowing God. So they cannot tell you, I don't know, because I'm connected to God, and God is all-knowing, so I got to know. How dare you question God, because I'm connected to God. And you don't question God, the all known. <clears throat> the
They don't like us here. <clears throat> because we are real. We bring not just truth, the real truth to the best of our ability. And it doesn't necessarily mean I like it. Truth hurts. Truth changes because with new information, your conclusions has to be different. If you have a math problem, one plus seven is eight, but then you add a three, the math problem has to change because you got something new, something, something has been added. And we don't want to do that. We become loyal to our conclusions. And we want to ignore new information. In fact, we don't even want to, we ignore our own information. We're telling the story, but you're not telling the story in its full capacity. Because if you told the story in its full capacity, it would still destroy your narrative that you have become loyal to. It's sad. So here we are, Easter weekend, and nobody really wants the truth. Because the truth of the matter is, your belief system is in error. The truth of the matter is, your God is not real. The truth of the matter is, you are worshiping fairy tales suffer from delusions and fantasy. Now, they don't want to hear that. But that's the real truth. The ultimate truth. Here we are. This is Easter weekend. The celebration of Easter or the resurrection of Christ. Easter represents spring, rep Easter represents rebirth. We don't have to do that here because this platform, that's what we are about. The rebirth, the new, the resurrection of the dead to bring life abundantly to give you your life back. That's what a soul is in religious terminology. The soul is what makes this flesh and blood alive. The soul is life. And to bring that, and this Christ is to give you life and to bring it abundantly. The same could be said in Islam and Judaism to give life and bring life abundantly. But clearly after thousands and thousands of years gone by, Judaism and Islam and Christianity, you have failed. You have failed to improve the human condition. In fact, your activities and your beliefs your misunderstanding and misguidance and the corruption in your religion has caused humanity to be in a horrid condition, bad condition, all over the earth. Wherever you find Islam and Christianity, Judaism, or any kind of religious or spiritual system among the people, you will find oppression, suffering, and death, poverty destruction, never-ending wars, wherever you find these things. Shout out to Facebook. I want to make sure I greet my Facebook family. Thank you so much for joining us on this uh, Easter afternoon. I don't want to keep us long. I just want to make a few points and get out of here. <clears throat> I 
Nobody knows it all. I don't know it, it, it all. I can tell you I don't know. What's wrong with saying I don't know? What's wrong with telling a person you made a good point? I got to think on that. We're dealing with people so full of hatred. Arrogant. I can't be wrong. It's impossible. You telling me it's impossible or it's possible because you say you believe. Belief is not a fact. So when you say I believe, that's mean you're telling me it's a possibility you could be wrong. You cannot represent facts and belief at the same time. They don't mix. Either it's a belief or it's a fact. You cannot mix oil and water. It's one or the other. So when you act like this, you show yourself contrary to what you claim that you believe in because what you said that you believe in, you stand upon truth and what is right. It's not right when you reject the truth because it changed the narrative of your belief system because the ultimate the ultimate priority is supposed to be standing on the truth, not on a belief, standing on the truth, stand on facts. And you're not doing that and don't want to do that. You are loyal to lies, outrageous lies and fairy tales and delusions and myths. And you have become deceivers and you trick the little children. using them so these would want us here with our minds they would like for us to be destroyed because they cannot defend the lies that they bring to us and claim that is true because we show and try to be respectful and civil and show you that it is false. They want to hold on to deception. How many of you have ever had a toothache? I know I have. It can be very, very painful. My uncle, may he rest in peace. I remember my uncle, he's a, he was a big guy. And my uncle had a toothache. Now here's this man, he's almost 300 pounds and he's got all these muscles and, and whatever. I watched him get a toothache. And this toothache brought this big old man all these muscles, all this strength, all this manhood made him cry. He grabbed his jaw and was just holding on to his jaw like, God damn. The next thing I know, he was on the floor hugging the bed. I'm like, woo, that's a painful thing. How many of you have had a serious toothache like that? Don't, woo. I've never had a toothache like that. I've never seen a toothache bring somebody like my uncle down like that. Like, woo. That was that was an incredible sight to me. I'm like, wow. So when you have a toothache or any pain that's bothering you, any kind of problem. How long are you willing to wait? How long are you willing to wait 
to do something about that pain. When you are in a painful situation. When we go to the drugstore, one of the main selling points for aspirin and all these different medications, fast and speedy relief. You're not going to pick up the aspirin. Well, it's, it's going to take three or four days. Three or four days? Oh, my tooth is killing me. I need something that's going to give me fast, speedy relief. And so you go to the aspirin, you go to the pills that said that you that that claim they're going to give you fast, speedy relief. And you get mad as hell when you start taking these pills. Hey, I still, it's been five, six hours. I still got this toothache. What happened to fast, speedy relief? You go to the dentist and that dentist is supposed to help you with your toothache. And nothing is happening. This is your favorite dentist. This is your favorite dentist. Oh, well, we've been going to Brother Muhammad Dentistry for generations. He's a good dentist. I, I like Dr. Muhammad Dentistry. You still have your toothache. How long are you going to stay loyal to Dr. Muhammad dentistry to the point where you say, look, you, you, you do not, you're not doing it. I like you. Something is wrong with my tooth. You go find another dentist. That's common sense. I want you to keep this example in, in mind as we continue this, this conversation. I'm not going to hold you long. I want to do this, make these points and get out of here. So in the 1920s, in the 1930s, our ancestors, being a little over 70 some years from chattel slavery, in fact, our ancestors were still getting hung, lynched outright. That was going on in the 1920s, 1930s. They were living a painful existence like that of a toothache. So they prayed to Jesus and been praying to Jesus ever since slavery. No relief, but they hold on to Jesus even to this day. But common sense tell us if you're in pain, if you're in pain, then you want fast and speedy relief. But clearly, our belief in the Jesus that our oppressor gave us, it, it did not work. It, was, it wasn't working. We're still in pain. So in the early 1920s, 1930s, somebody brought us some new pain relief because clearly Jesus Christ ain't working that, that well. We were introduced to the nation of Islam in the 1930s. Now, we also was introduced to what we call the Moorish Science Temple. Both of them are or represent Islam, which is a religion that was revealed to a foreign people in a foreign land to us. We don't know nothing about that. We never live nowhere except 
in the good old United States. We've never been in Kemet. We've never been in Israel. We've never been nowhere except the good old United States. And prior to that, it was the slave plantation. The slave plantation, the United States period. So they rise up and tell us, they rise up and, and tell us <clears throat> black man and woman, Africans, the Negro, you got a toothache. We have the solution. We're going to bring you fast and speedy relief. That's what they're going to tell you. Fast and speedy relief. I want us to understand that Christianity was forced on our ancestors. They didn't have too much of a choice. And they accepted Christianity on face value. There was no questioning. It was given to you and you take it and they accept it on face value. So when this Islam, this nation of, of Islam teaching and this more science temple teachings, when they come up, remember our people, our people, our ancestors, the majority, remember the majority, there were actual Look, there were actual physical slaves still living in the 1920s and 30s who actually were the children of physical slaves and they also lived on the slave plantation. They are in their 90s and almost 100 or whatever. Our people were illiterate. Our people still had a slave mentality. They were not educated. They did not know anything about critical thinking. Remember, the slave master did all the thinking for you. You don't have to think. And so when they were introduced to Nation of Islam, more science temple teachings, and they argue with, with each other, who was first, who was better, it doesn't make any difference because both of you fail in your mission. Both of you did not bring, till this day, you did not bring fast and speedy relief. Don't get angry at Angel Snub Nub 7. Because I just point this out. We're still complaining about a toothache in 2022. The toothache is still here. But we must understand our ancestors, our people embraced these things because they was hurting, being lynched. They were oppressed. And here comes somebody with these teachings. The black man is God and you're so great. You're the chosen people of God. And that makes folks feel good. The same way that Christianity made the slave feel good on the plantation and didn't do nothing for you. And we will see that Islam to this day has done nothing for us to this day. Your toothache is still going on. It has not brought relief to your pain and your suffering. How long you gonna wait? Now we talked to Muslims, and we talk to those in the Moorish Science Temple, and many of them have very arrogant, all-knowing, pompous attitudes. And they call us lost founds. I know in the Nation of Islam, I spent a lot of time, I was a member of the Nation of Islam with Louis Farrakhan. 
and we call people who are not like us lost founds because we're found. We're awakened. And they tell you that you're asleep. This is how they this is how they talk. Because I'm better than the average Negro. I'm better than the drug dealer. I'm better than a single mother. I'm better than uh, the CEO of Z Xerox Corporation. I, 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 I know God. I have the knowledge of self. This is what they say. This is how they move. This is their mindset. They are better, smarter. have better information and wisdom than the average brother and sister. Now, mind you, mind you, prior to them, our ancestors already had a Rosewood town and had black towns all over the, all over the country. We had Black Wall Street that was Christian. Black Wall Street was Christian they didn't run around talking about, well, in the name of Jesus Christ. They just were surviving. They weren't trying to promote a religion. I'm just going to do this because I need to survive. They didn't call it Christian uh, Black Wall Street or Wall Street. We're just, we just trying to survive. We Christians go to church every Sunday, whatever. We're just trying to survive. But not the Nation of Islam. Not the more Science Temple. They're going to tell you it's all about Islam, your savior. We're gonna heal your heal you from your toothache. You're smarter than I am. Now, mind you, what is your source? Your source is outside yourself. You getting this from, from some Arab. No more Drew Ali, to, to my knowledge, no more Drew Ali took a trip to Mecca some damn where over there. And they told him, well, you know, y'all black folks, y'all the chosen people or some crap like that. And they hyped his head up and he brought this, he brought their, he brought their religion here. Because he went over there with nothing, had nothing to offer. No original thought, no mind. And they tricked him and they brainwashed him. And he came back to bring their religion. The Holy Quran was revealed to Arabs. Not to a Negro, not to a black man in America. It was given to them 1400 years ago. For them, not us. The Bible and the Holy Quran, if it was not for translation, you couldn't even read it. So you couldn't even teach your Islam because you can't read Arabic. And the Bible is filled up with all kinds of different languages. These things was not meant for you. If it was meant for you, it would have been given to you in your language. If it was meant to you, God would have made it clear and brought it to you himself instead of a damn third party, but you smarter than Angel Snub Number 7. Everything that comes from the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry that comes from here comes from us. It comes from Angel Snub Number 7. It comes from us vibing with each other. We don't have to go to Mecca. We don't have to go to Israel. We don't have to read the Bible. We don't have to read the Quran. But you, you smarter than the lost found. You smarter than the people that you call sleep. But this sleep person, this lost found, don't need to go to some foreigners and adopt their God. This is the corny thing about it. These same people 
will make mockery of our brothers and sisters who are Christians, who have white Jesus on the wall, but here you are, you're gonna bring in an Arab God and put Arabs on your wall. In the nation of Islam, their God is Master Farad Muhammad. He is not a black man. He don't look like a black man. And if you put some long hair on him and a beard, he would look like who? White Jesus. But you think that you better and smart and got something different and you don't. Foreigners. If God love you the way you claim, then God would raise somebody among us who is us to give us our own book not some leftovers. The Bible is somebody else's leftovers. The God, the message was given to somebody else. The Quran, the message, that was given to somebody else. Don't have nothing to do with you. You like a pig that eats slop. Somebody else leftovers. That makes you proud. That does not make me proud. Most people don't like leftovers. I know I really don't like leftovers. And the best food is fresh food, not leftovers, reworn. When we embrace the Bible and the Quran, that's reworn food. Leftovers and scraps from somebody else's plate. Why would God do that to you? But God, you said God love us. God give us somebody else leftovers. If God has the power to create the sun and the earth and the universe, you mean to tell me this God can't give the black man and woman of America, soul brothers and sisters, you can't give us our own holy book? Raise among us our own prophet. Give us our own. Not somebody else hand me down. But you smarter and better than Angel Snuffin' Up Seven. I'm not getting nothing from no foreign source. And if you believe in God, the best tool, the best thing God has ever gave us brothers and sisters, is your brain, is your brain. But see, you depending on somebody else to do your thinking for you. Your brain is mush. Well, the Bible say, the prophets say, what about you? What do you say? How do you think? You are a program zombie robot. We don't do that here. We will, we will make reference to the Bible. We will make reference to other sources. We do our own thinking here. We are the source right here in America, not Arabia, not Israel. Not only the Moorish Science Temple, not only the Nation of Islam, but all this stuff that we get come from foreigners. What, does, what, is, this, what is this saying? We're not smart enough. We're not intelligent enough. You're the chosen people of God, but God don't give us a damn thing. There always got to be a middle man. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. 
but he's the number two man. The number one man looks like a white man that come from a foreign country. Like, damn. We can't do nothing on our own. We that damn stupid and doofless. Are you serious? We can't do nothing on our own. We always need advice and help from somebody else. We so stupid, you got to get help from 5,000 miles away. That's a damn shame. That, that's telling, that's showing the world how pathetic and useless you are. If God loved me, God would give me my own. Many of us, we, we were raised with brothers and sisters and we was poor like myself. We was raised in poverty. And we got, we got hand-me-downs. You got the hand-me-downs from your older brothers and sisters because your parents, you wasn't in a position to just throw clothes away. Now, I was the only boy for years in my family, so I, I didn't get hand-me-downs. But my sisters, because I had a whole lot of sisters, they used to complain, I'm tired, I don't want to wear so-and-so hand-me-downs. You actually feel pride with somebody else hand-me-downs. Good Lord. Mm. This is Easter Sunday. Welcome to the Angel Snutting Up 7 Sunday Sermon on this Easter Sunday. I thank you so much. Shout out to our Facebook family. I don't want to forget. I'm almost done with my points. We're going to get out of here. See, the sad thing about it is you, we already know all this. Everything that I'm saying is you already know. I'm not saying nothing new. But you want to continue to hold on to that stuff that really is degrading you. It's not uplifting you. It's making you look pitiful and pathetic, a bunch of losers. That's why they don't like coming here because I'm quick to call us losers. The only thing we did was go from one slave plantation to another. One plantation spoke English and now this new plantation is speaking um, Arabic or, or, or Aramaic or whatever. It, it's not our language because the only language we know is good old English right here in America. If you're getting something from somewhere else, it, that's from another foreign source. It's not you at all. It's not us. The top priority of the Nation of Islam and the Moorish Science Temple is not our liberation. It's not for us to be free. The top priority for them is to convert you to become an Arab, some kind of Arab. That's what it's for. They have no concern for your liberation and your freedom. That's their top priority. They use that as a selling point. Well, the black man is suffering in America and the white devil, blah, blah. Those are nothing but selling points. When you read the material of the Nation of Islam, it's very clear. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad say, come follow me to Islam. That's your freedom. Come follow me to Islam. That's the freedom. Behind closed doors, it's about the religion. In the public, the public face of Moore Science Temple and the Nation of Islam, the public face is put on this mask like we so concerned about the problems of the black man and blah, blah, blah. Oh, woe is me. Oh, I feel sorry for Trayvon Martin, Sean Bell and blah, blah. No, behind closed doors, how many people can we convert? And they make sure if they do anything for you, all praises due to Allah, 
I didn't ask you about all that. Why, why are you advertising Allah? I just wanted a, a piece of bread. I'm hungry. Well, I just want to let you know Allah provide. The prophet Noble Drew Ali, he, he made it possible. for. Why are you telling me all this? Because that's what it's about. It's about not your freedom, not your liberation. It's about promoting a religion for Arabs, for foreigners. Their religion. It's not yours. Their God. It's their God. If it was your God, then we would be clear. It would be factual. Your God supposed to look like you. That's what they say. Oh, don't, don't. You, a black family should have a black symbol of God. Well, how come yours is Arabic? I say that a black family should have a black holy book, a holy book, that represents them. Who is all these strange ass people in the Bible and Quran? Who the hell is David? Who the hell is Noah? Who the hell is all these damn people? Foreigners. That's not us. That's not you. So they have a problem with Angel Snub Number Seven because I want my own. We represent soul power here. We are soul brothers and sisters here. And I can make it any way I want to make it because it's me, it's mine. So these people, you taking somebody else's religion and then they tell you, well, you see that that's not how it goes. The prophet said do this and the prophet said that. And they can tell you because it's their crap. You're going to tell the white man about white Jesus. You can't tell the white man about white Jesus. That's his stuff. You can't tell them about Allah. <laughs> it's just so funny. I'm watching TV and I'm watching all these uh, newly converted brothers and sisters. They converted to Orthodox Islam and they're doing their salats and all that kind of good stuff. And some of them have the nerve, somebody like Louis Fryker, they can have the nerve to try to tell them people about their religion. That's not your religion. You can't tell them. Nation of Islam is a revised version of their religion, the Arab religion. And it was the intent of Elijah Muhammad to eventually one day Join them because that's what it's all about. It's about converting you to a religion. It's not about your freedom and your liberation. It's about converting you, brainwashing you to a religion. Religion is a dictatorship. Religion is a slave plantation. It's run the same kind of way. They will even tell you that God is a, a dictator because that's what it's about. It's God way or the highway. There is no democracy. And if you notice, these people will tell you and hype you up about the American involvement in the slave trade, the transatlantic slave trade. They will hype you up Look at this devil. Look what he did to us. Look how they beat Kuta Kente. I have an ex. I have an ex because I don't want my slave name. Look how they lynch us. Discrimination. They hype you up. And you sit back in the cut. Yeah, go ahead, Malcolm. Go ahead, Malcolm. But this is the problem. This is the problem. Oh, I say it, I say it again. You've been had. You've been took. You've been hoodwinked. Bamboozled. Let us stray. Run amok. This is what he does. 
But this time, the one who hoodwink you, the one who have bamboozled us, look like us. It's not the white man. It comes from my own. It's not that they did it intentionally, y'all. I don't I want to say this. It's not that they really did it intentional, not back in the day. In 2022, they know better. They doing it because they can get you all hyped up and they can make money off of you. In 2022, I cannot really say that they went for the old okie doke back in those days. They didn't know any better. Our people was illiterate and ignorant. They just didn't know any better. They was trying to find a way out. Clawing and scratching. My tooth is hurt. I need to find quick, speedy relief. But in 2022, they know better. And I know they know better because when you bring these points to them, <laughs> they, they get angry. They don't know how to respond. They know better. But this religion is making a lot of money for people. This religious stuff, they're getting a lot of booty. They're getting a lot of booty because of the religion and praise. Twenty-four hour. They talking about praising some kind of man. Noah Drew Ali. I don't care how great Noah Drew Ali is. I'm not gonna be hollering his name 24 hours a day. That sounds gay as hell. I'm not doing that. Allah is a male. I'm not gonna say, oh Allah, oh Allah. You sound like you're having an orgasm over a man. Because your God is a man. Oh, Master Farah, that's a man. I'm not gonna be hollering and screaming. No man named 24 hours a day. That sound gay as hell. Then they turn around and talk about they're not gay. You sound gay. And I know in the nation of Islam, I was uncomfortable because one of their greetings is you greet the brother, shake his hand, and you guys lean over cheek to cheek. I'm like, nah, I can't do that. I felt funny as hell. Then you put men's pictures on the wall, Master Farah Muhammad, Nova Jolly. Where the, where the women at? You, you, you see what I have on my wall? <laughs> you see what I have on my wall? I'm not, I don't want to see no hard up looking men. I, I can't, I cannot do that. The best I can do is my Malcolm X pen. <laughs> That's the best I'm going to do. And I don't sit around every day talking about, oh, Malcolm X, oh, Malcolm X, and the Malcolm X. Uh, it ain't this. I don't do the dingling, y'all. <laughs> I can't do the dangling. <laughs> I don't even want to see my own dangling, let alone see mess around and look at other men. I don't, I, I don't, I, I can't do that. I remember when I was in school and you had to take a shower in the public shower after gym class. I refused. Well, if you don't, why are they going to force you to take a shower with other guys like that? I don't want to see their dingling and that their asses out. I don't want to see that. I don't want to see no men's butts and dinglings slanging around. <laughs> and I would say, you know, because of that experience, I can say some of the brothers are hanging a little bit. And I know from what I saw, I, you know, I didn't want to see, but. So they're gonna tell me, if you don't get in the shower with these other guys, we're gonna to have to take points off your grade. Well, you're gonna to have to take points off your grade because I'm not gonna get in the shower with, with other men, boys, guys. And, and this teacher told, he, he told me, we all got the same thing. No, sir, no, no, sir. You got your thing, I got my thing. We don't have the same. And I can guarantee you, my thing don't look like your thing. <laughs> I, don't, I can't do that. I cannot do that. And some of these people, even the millionaires right now, they don't have. If you're a basketball player, football player, 
These guys take showers together. I can't do that. I don't want to see another man's, just like pornography. How can you as a man watch pornography and you watching another man? <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> what you think about that brother's body? <laughs> I can't do it. I cannot do it. I cannot. I'm sorry. No, I'm not sorry. I'm not doing it. I just, that's not my, I can't, I can't get down like that. I can't, I, no, no. Forgive me on Easter Sunday for talking like this. I can't. <laughs> Actually, it's a good thing. Because that, that, I cannot do that. But in these religions, it's all about men, all, all about men all the time. I cannot do that. Whether it's Christianity, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and the Father. And when you look at Islam, it's all about men. Noah Drew Ali and whoever was next to him. Where, where y'all women at? <laughs> as much as they want to uh, make babies and 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 and, and Exploit women? What? Oh, what? Oh, that's it. I answer my own question. They don't mind exploiting women, raping women, cheating on women, demeaning women. But women are not part of the godhood. Why? Why? As a male, why would you want to participate and be part of something that don't put some womanhood on the plate? I'm putting womanhood on my plate. I can't, I can't do that. And they proud of it too. All praise do it to Allah. Allah is a man. For Prophet Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad is a man. Uh, the Holy Ghost, I don't know what gender the Holy Ghost is. I, I don't, I don't know what the gender the Holy Ghost is. Uh, Jesus, the Father, all this man stuff. I, I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm almost done. We're going to get out of here. Can y'all hang another few minutes? <laughs> Facebook, how you doing? How you doing? <laughs> Woo. Uh, I can't, I can't do it. So, so you have these people, when it comes to American slavery, I mean, they will talk about that all day. But to my knowledge, the Arab slave trade was far worse than what the Europeans done. To my knowledge. I know the brother's back is very uh, up on, on that point. And I'm very sure if I'm incorrect, please correct me. From what I have been told, the Arab slave trade, which affected Af the African continent also melanated people was worse than American chattel slavery. And you don't hear them talking about the Arab slave trade because they have their religion and the religion justified what the Arabs was doing. Talk so to me. Just like Christianity supported American chattel slavery, the Quran supported what the Arabs was doing. These are facts. And the sad thing about it, Islam, those who believe in Islam right now, they still practice slavery in parts of the world under Islam right now. They don't talk about that. You won't hear Louis Farrakhan or Eric Muhammad. The brother back say, well, some people said America shipped 100 million Africans, so I doubt that could be beaten. I think that's an outrageous, exaggerated number. Because if you do the mathematics, it's, it's not going to work. It's not going to work if you do the mathematics. 
because you have to consider and look at the fact going from America to Africa during those days on a ship, that's almost a year journey and you can only haul about a hundred people at a time. How many trips, how many boats and ships you need in order to transfer a hundred people, African, to the new world? Mind you, they say so many drown in the middle passage. The story don't sound right to me. But again, even so, they killed Colonel Gaddafi in Libya. They are practicing slavery and sex trafficking under Islam right now in Libya right now. You don't hear Farrakhan talking about it or none of these Orthodox Black Muslim Moorish science type, type folks because that's their people. And if they got, woo, if they got a chance, you think they wouldn't do different? You think they wouldn't put Angel Snuff number seven in chains and make a slave out of me? And Mello and the brothers back and brother Talib and the Deacon? You think they wouldn't do that? You already know, understand the kind of mentality that they have. Because it's justified by God. And that's what, as long as God says it's okay, they're willing to do it. They'll blow your brains out. In the name of God. <laughs> so, they come to us and we have a toothache. And they tell us they can solve our problem quick, speedy relief. Jesus didn't, it didn't work with Jesus. What we got will bring you relief. So the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, come follow me to Islam. It can put you on heaven on earth overnight. Fast, quick, speedy relief. So we've been under this for a hundred years. Nation of Islam, 90, more science temple, actually a hundred and something. We've, we've, had their, we've had their fast and speedy relief for a hundred years. Where are we at? Are you relieved? Don't, don't get angry at Angel Snuff number seven. You made the claim. Put up a shut up. You said follow Islam and thousands of us follow Islam, whether it's Nation of Islam, whether it's More Science Temple, thousands of have done that. Have they been relieved? Don't worry about me because I didn't take your damn medicine. Thousands have taken your medicine. Have they been relieved? And the answer is, Hell no. So it goes back to Muhammad dentistry and you have a toothache. I understand you like Minister Farrakhan. I understand that you like the Prophet Noble Jali. I understand you like that them, those uh, warm-up TV dinner religion that you got. That's what it is. Warm up TV dinner religion. That's what you got. You still hungry. Your tooth still, your tooth is still hurting. How long are you going to wait? We've already waited a hundred years on the teachings of Elijah Muhammad to bring us fast, speedy relief. We've already waited over a hundred for the Moore Science Temple. How long are we supposed to wait? How long are you going to wait on Dr. Muhammad? to get it right until you decide I can't take it no more. I got to go to another dentist. I can't, I can't do this. You cannot say 
you didn't have a chance. Now, Angel Snuff Note 7, we can say that Operation Exodus Mississippi campaign, we never had a chance to do nothing. Nobody support, nobody, nobody trying to help us like that. But the more Science Temple, these Christian churches, Pan-Africanism, the Hebrew Israelites, all this stuff, the Kemetics, all this stuff been around for a long, long time. And your tooth is still hurting. How long are you going to be loyal to Muhammad dentistry before you realize you're going to die from a toothache being loyal to him? He's still going to be alive and your ass is going to be dead because of a toothache. And you do know that toothaches can kill you. Y'all do know that, right? A toothache, problems with your teeth can kill you. I, we was, I was talking with Melo about that a couple of months ago. You got to take care of your teeth. Your, things that happen in your mouth can kill you. Got to take care of our teeth. So some of you who have forgotten I, I am the reminder. Make your dentist appointment. I have to make one myself. It's about that time. Take care of your teeth. There's nothing like having real teeth. <laughs> you don't want none of that fake stuff in your mouth. Nothing like your real teeth. I remember when I was locked up. <clears throat> I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a competitor. People like to compete with me because I give my all. I like to win. I don't understand black folks. I don't understand Pat African folks, the uh, comedic folks, the Hebrew Israelites. Y'all act like y'all like to lose. I'm, I'm a winner. On this platform, we like to win. And we have an attitude, even when we lose, we win. So you, so you can't beat us. Because even when we lose, we win. These folks, they like to lose. So I'm playing cards with this brother. And you know how you play basketball or cards and we start talking trash. Like say for instance, I'm playing basketball with twin, twin pyramid. And he just got those dribbling skills. I'm trying to take the ball from him. He know I can't take the ball. His skills are just too dynamic. I'm getting frustrated. And he's talking crap. Come on, old man. Come on, try. You can't do nothing with this. You're too old. Bro. You know, talking trash. Some folks can't handle that. Some folks can't handle people talking trash like that. They will go get a, a, a brick or something, brush you in your face, cuss you out. They cannot handle people talking trash like that. Michael Jordan was known for talking trash on the basketball. It's called getting into people's heads. It's a strategy when you're on the basketball court. Even when you're boxing, I remember um, Evander Holyfield was talking big time crap to Mike Tyson when Mike Tyson, Mike Tyson bit his, bit his ear. <laughs> That's a strategy. Talking trash is a strategy because if you can get in somebody's head, they won't play their best. They're not concentrating. So you can beat them talking trash. I'm not telling you nothing new. Everything that I bring to rally is to people. Most of you already know. You already know. They ain't not talking nothing new. So this brother, I'm talking trash. And this brother stood up. I'm tired of you running your damn mouth. I'm sick of y'all feeling. I'm going to kick your ass right now. I'm like, whoa. What brought all that on? And he went into his jaw and pulled out the bottom <laughs> of his teeth and threw him on the desk to go, come on, come on, I'm kicking your ass. And everybody stopped, look, I couldn't even take this man seriously. All of us is tripping. Now this guy wants to kick my ass and we looking at his teeth on the table like, <laughs> I don't know. Was I that fast? I'd already hit him so quick to knock the teeth out the man's mouth. Like, what? The? We couldn't even take him serious. Everybody started laughing. And he was, come on, well, I'm kicking. He, 
And we was laughing. He looked at what he had did. He started laughing. It was, it was funny. I didn't know those was fake teeth. Take care of your teeth. Because if you don't take care of your teeth and you mess around and have a love affair with Leah Portchop Muhammad, she going to go tell everybody, yeah, I was messing with that nigga. That nigga don't have no teeth. <laughs> she would tell everything. And, and poo 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 lady, these women, they get mad. You don't have no teeth in your mouth. They going to tell on you. They like to snitch. <clears throat> they like to tell people what you got and what you don't have when folks get mad. He don't have no teeth. He got a glass eye. He got a fake ass arm. <laughs> they gonna tell everything. <laughs> These folks something else. They gonna tell everything they think they know. I wanna say this in conclusion because I've said what I need to say. I don't want none of your hand-me-down leftover, rewarm religion. Also, when you're talking about Islam, in some of these Islamic countries, if you're a woman, you are denied education. You can get raped and nothing would be done about it. In some of these African countries, it is legal that your husband can kill you for not doing your wifely duties. I'm going to say that again. They, they want us to go to Africa, get involved in all that African stuff. If you're a woman in some of these places in Africa, it is legal. If your husband believes you're not doing your wifely duties right, he can kill you. And this is this kind of thing that y'all want to get caught up in all this African Islamic stuff that these people are, are selling us. I say, get on the soul train because the soul train is life. Life more abundantly. Not going to do nothing to hurt you. Do everything to make you better so that you can have heaven on earth. So that you can have peace in our lives. We've already had hell. Why we want to continue to live in hell, going from one plantation to another? They have failed doing what they claim they can do for us. Our tooth is still hurting. I'm going to say this and we're going to get out of here. <clears throat> we were invited on Morris World TV. Shout out to to Hakka Bay and Morris World TV citizens, that platform. And we was having a conversation and we were invited there so far about three times or whatever. And to Hakka Bay, for those of you who have seen those, those interactions, you will bear witness that the only thing he tried to do, try to convert Angel Snup Nup 7 to more science temple stuff. He even said, oh brother, when we done, you gonna be wearing a fez. You remember that? That was, I think that was the last video we done or the video prior to that. Oh brother, when we done, you gonna be wearing a fez. <laughs> Now, some of you who have been following me for years, like the brother is back, how many times do you, do you see me on a video wearing a cap or a hat? I might be outside in, in, in the wintertime or, or whatever. I wear a cap. I might wear a cap and a hat now and then. I don't wear caps and fezzes and hats. I don't, I don't like stuff on my head like that. I cannot even imagine running around with this big red dunce cap on my head. That's what it reminds me of. Remember those cartoons when you when you when you're done, they put that that dunce cap on top of your head. That's what those fezzes look like to me. Like you dumb as hell. 
with with the little tassel. I like what the come on. That's a, that that look gay as hell to me. <laughs> this big red. You know what that that fez look like? That fez look like those cone when you taking uh when you taking your test in the car. They put those cones on the road and you got to twist around the cone. That's what that fez look like. Then they put a little tassel on top. Okay. I can't do it. I can't do it, people. I'm I'm sorry. I can't. I can't do it. I just live the American European lifestyle that I'm familiar with. And then what we can do, we can adapt certain things from Africa or certain places, but you make it your own. Don't be like them. I don't want to be an African. I can eat African food. I can wear African clothes. I can adapt things from Africa. Human beings do that all the time anyway. We do things and get things from people. We don't even have no idea it came from a foreign place. Whatever one human being would do, all human beings sooner or later will share in whatever that person created or invented or whatever. That's just how it goes. Unless you're only racist people is concerned, well, you know, we the one that invented the wheel. We invented the computer. What we? You didn't do nothing. All these people talk about, look what, look what we did. Okay, if we did it, where's your contribution to whatever it is that you're trying to claim? Well, the white man created, I'm a white man, and we can create a computer. We can, what was your contribution? Just because the person is black or Caucasian or Asian, the racist, look what we did. You ain't did a damn thing. Those individuals, Who's, who just so happened to be a part of your race or whatever, they did it as an individual. You ain't do a damn thing. Most of us, if it was up to us, we wouldn't even be driving a car. We don't know how to, we don't know how cars work. If it was if it was up to us, we would not be talking on cell phones. We don't know how cell phones work. We don't know how computers work. We don't know how TVs work. If it was up to us as individuals, we don't know a damn thing. All that we know how to do is, is, is use stuff. We don't know how to invent. We're not creative. We're not original about a damn thing, the average person. We did. You ain't we ain't did a damn thing. But Tahaka Bay <clears throat> trying to convert me, spent most of his time trying to convert me to Islam as taught by the prophet Nova Juhali. So I'm just, I'm just sitting on his platform like, okay, okay. It's his platform. If you want, if that's what you want to do, okay, whatever. I don't want your rewarm, rehash, think that you're smart and intelligent, got from an Arab religion, ideology, belief. I don't need that. This is the reality's temple on earth, the most powerful voice on social media. And I can guarantee you, put us up face to face with these people, I will drop all of them. I'm not going to talk about no damn Quran or no Bible and the metaphysical and what happened 5,000 years ago. I don't need all that stuff. And I can guarantee you, if you take this medicine, we're going to bring you relief, fast and speedy relief. I guarantee you. Now, it was a point in our conversation I had with Tahaka Bay. It had got to the point where I was I was uh, pushing him into a corner, and it got to the point where 
he said, well, well, I need it. I need this re, re this rewarm uh, stuff from, from Arab folks. I, I, I need it. It, 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 it puts me, it, it, it keeps me, it keeps me grounded. I need it. So I'm listening to him like, what do you mean you need it? He sounds like a crack thing, a dope thing, an alcoholic. What do you mean you need it? You have a brain. The Holy Quran and the Bible, no majority, all these people, it came from their brain. Why do you think what why do you think that these people are special and you are a dumbass? You can't think on your own. Why can't you come up with your own type version? Why God can't talk to you and bring revelation to you like like the revelation was brought to Noah Ali or to Prophet Muhammad? What make these people special? Nobody special, nobody better than Angel Snuffin' Up Seven. The hell with your revelation. You're not smarter, you're not better, you're not, you're not more intelligent than me. I'll whoop these people all up and down the road. They don't have nothing coming. We already know what they think, how you think. You, you're a bunch of program robots. Before you can even say anything. I already know how you think. It's no shock. It comes from the Bible. It's the words of Noah Jolly. Lee. You don't have no mind of your own. And Noah Jolly Lee is dead. And Elijah Muhammad is dead. So these people have to manufacture stuff. They don't have any choice because the, the one that was programming their brain is, is dead. And of course, the Bible ain't nothing but a piece of paper by dead people. Everything about these religions is dead. How are you going to how are you going to be surrounded by death and talk about I'm going to bring life to the people? Everybody in the Bible, everybody in the Quran is dead. Nobody Drew Ali is dead now. Elijah Muhammad is dead now. Master Fraud Muhammad, no ain't nobody around. But you represent life and everything about you is dead. Jesus hanging on the damn cross, he dead. <laughs> Body damn dead. So here we represent life. You can call me on the phone. You can send me an email. I value your brain. Once you disconnect to the programming, once you disconnect from what they say, the matrix, use your brain. If you believe in God, that's God's greatest gift to the human being is your brain. Your brain is here. It can solve all your problems for you. You don't have to run around, regurgitate information from some dead ass people from 5,000, 4,000, 1,400 years ago, 2,000 years ago. Apparently, the stuff didn't work for them. What did it do for them? What did the Holy Quran do for Prophet Muhammad? What did it do? What did the Bible, that stuff, what did it do for Jesus? Didn't do nothing for them. Jesus got murdered on the cross. Didn't do nothing for them Arabs. They still crazy as hell right now to this day. And you're going to follow that like it's good, like it's a good thing. If there is a God, God will bring you your own revelation. And I will tell you, if God exists, that revelation is coming through Angel Snub Nub 7. And this ministry called the Reality is Temple on Earth. All that stuff needs to go away. It served its time. It did what it had to do. And we should allow it to pass. 
it has failed. The brother's back says, I agree, they have failed. They keep stringing us along for 100 years. How long, exactly. How long does it take? How much more time do you need? It's time that we go find another doctor. It's time that we find new strategy. I understand that you love Dr. Muhammad Dentistry. He's not getting the job done, you're still in pain. I thank us for joining me this uh, Easter Sunday. I, I, I try not to uh, offend nobody on this day, even though they themselves may not respect this period of time. I would try to do that. And I, I don't believe in these things, as you know. But I, I do have respect for people and I don't want to try to offend anybody. But what we said here, I don't think you should be offended. Everything that I said here is, is, is right. I would be happy to debate Nation of Islam. I would be happy to debate Hebrew Israelite. I would be happy to debate more Science Temple. I prefer not the little guys, because y'all don't y'all don't know. I want the big wigs, the ones that really think they know something, that look down upon folks because they're so smart and intelligent with your leftovers, your hand-me-down. And when you talk about that comedic stuff, you grow, you rob in the graveyard because that's what, that's what the tombs in Egypt is, the pyramids, nothing but tombs. Robbing the graveyard, grave robbers. And we in America, black people, we don't have nothing to do with Kemet. There were no Egyptian slaves that came here um, to America. How the hell we get connected to, to Kemet? When I was a little boy in the 1970s, they told me that was black history, but they never taught us those Egyptians, those, those people in Kemet was us. They did not teach us that. It's just part of melanated history and they just wanna show us that dark people, melanated people have done certain things on the planet, but that's, but they're not us. We never live in Africa. We only live on a slave plantation or in Detroit or Philadelphia or St. Louis or LA or Houston. That's what we don't know nothing about no other foreign countries. We don't know nothing about that. This is all we know. And we build upon what we know, not what we believe. Because if you build upon something that you believe could be right, could be wrong. But when you build upon something that you know, and what we know is what our ancestors have done in this country. And to me, it's very disrespectful. And it's very, when you talk about self-hatred, it's self-hatred when you feel shame in the accomplishments of what our ancestors have done, even under oppression in this nation, you want to keep pointing your finger at Kemet or ancient Ethiopia or whatever, you deny your grandmother and grandfather, great, great grandparents, all of your people who are here, you deny them glory and honor, pointing fingers at these at foreign folks that may or may not be related to you. You know you're related to these people here. Brother Talib was talking on the last live stream that he knows that there are probably some kind of famous big shot people in his family. Why would he deny those people? Well, you should want to know those people. I know in my family, we had a major, we got a, uh, we had a major league baseball player I didn't know nothing about, and he was murdered. I, don't, I forgot who he played for, but he got involved in some crap and he was murdered 
when he first started his career. I just learned, found that out. There are, there are some of you, your relatives have done great things in this nation. And you want me, you want us just to ignore and just owe what they did in Kemet. Even in 2022, we have brothers and sisters who are scientists, physicists, chemists, all kinds of stuff. Right now, in 2022, you want us to, those people you talking about, they didn't go to the moon. They didn't have cell phones. They didn't have all, a lot of, it was, to, to, to my knowledge, it was a black man, it was a brother that created air conditioning and central air and heating. Why don't we study the things that we have done in this country? It was a brother that created the stoplight and the braking system in cars and trains. We done so much. And you and you you also know that these Pecklewoods stole a lot of the inventions that our people created, especially when they were slaves on the slave plantation. You want us just to ignore those things. This is what I say. Learn about yourself first. Learn about you. Brag about you. Love you first. Then you can talk about Kemet. Then you can talk about all these other African stuff. Love yourself first. So Angel Snuffin' Up 7 is not the self-hater. The real self-hater are you because you shame of your origins, your ancestors that was slaves for hundreds of years. But look what they did during oppression. Can you imagine what we could do once we are out of that, that stressful environment? Brother Corey in the house. Brother Corey says, good subject, but Islam tried to help blacks. Pimps say they try to help prostitutes. A pimp will see a woman on the street, she's struggling, and he would be nice to her. Next thing you know, she's selling her body going in and out of trucks and, and, and hotel rooms. What kind of help did Islam do for black people except make us more slaves? What's the real help? Make you feel good like like, they, like Reverend Porkchop do at, in church. Pretty, pretty speeches. Put on fancy clothes and costumes. What did Islam actually do to help black people? In reality, Christianity, Christians do more for the black community more than um, Muslims have ever done. Back then and to this day, Christians do more for the black community than Muslims have ever done. Brother Talib, did you want to come over, come in and, and uh, say something real quick before I close out this uh, program? He says the Muslims in those Middle East and Islam influenced African nations can't stop killing nor enslaving and giving and going to war with each other and oppressing their own population like in Libya and the Sudan. If you want to come here and say something real quick or anybody, I'm, I'll put the uh, the link in the chat room. Let me put the link in the chat room. Okay, I'm putting the link in the chat room. Anybody that want to come on board, say a few, a little something, something, you can do that. The link is in the chat room. You can come on board, say a little something, something before I close this one out here. I really enjoyed today. I really enjoyed our talk today. And for me, we got a full house. If it was just two of us here, that's great. It's, it's cool. And of course, you have uh, Muslims and you're going to have people, more science temple. You're going to have people, Nation of Islam. They're going to want to 
because this talk sounds negative. They want to try to explain and clarify. Then go our brother Talib. Let me shut up. Come on, brother Talib. Say what you got to say. Okay. Uh, thanks for allowing me uh, quickly to get this out. Uh, just like those of you that seen me in the chat commenting uh, about the situation, even concerning Islam, basically, um, you know, um, like I said before, if you bring the facts up to the nation of Islam, you know, about these Islamic countries over in the Middle East and even in parts of Africa that are influenced by Islam and, you know, show them then why is slavery existing in those parts of the world, in those Islamic influenced countries, even in Saudi Arabia. And I even had dark skinned Saudi Arabians right here in Nebraska, where I live at, admit to me that they do enslave dark skinned people in that country, but yet that's supposed to be the Holy Land. Okay, Sudan, no different. Mm -hmm. Muslims was enslaving dark skinned people in Sudan, like in Darfur. Mm -hmm. Okay, in Mauritania, and uh, I think it's uh, West Africa, somewhere Northwest Africa where they're still enslaving dark-skinned people at. And you had one uh, s slave abolitionist that was dark-skinned over there that was some type of slave abolitionist uh, activist leader that got sent to prison for two years for speaking and standing up against slavery in that country, or Mauritania. But yet you don't have your Islamic, uh, American Islamic uh, pundits like Louis Farrakhan or those in the Moore Science Temple of America that's talking about that. You know, you don't have them speaking on that type of subject or issue. You know what I'm saying? If they do, they might print it in a final call. And But that's how that's far as it go. But they don't really speak too much on that. You know what I'm saying? Or address that. So. Mm -hmm. What 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 real uh, incentive or healing does Islam have for black people? As I see somebody in the chat section talking about, you know what I'm saying? What I mean, you know, I've been around orthodox Islam. I was converted to that. I've been in other phases or around other phases as Islamic school of thoughts go. It is not for us. It has been proven. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know? I mean, it's, it's evident. It hasn't gotten us nowhere. These organizations like the Nation of Islam and the Moor Science Temple have been around for damn nearly just about a hundred years. Right. Almost a century. What has it accomplished? S uh, uh, you know, in a in a complete way to get us our liberation from up under this uh, over four hundred year oppressor. So you need to ask yourself these questions before you go blurting out. Islam has helped black people or tried to help black people. No, Islam has not. The people that teach that Islam doctrine ain't trying to help black people. If anything, they just trying to get their money. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? I mean, mm -hmm. we, we saw it with Elijah Muhammad. Oh, a matter of fact, see, little do people know the same thing went on with the Moor Science Temple during Noble Drew Ali's time. Because I forget, it was a secretary, uh, he went by the last name of Bay, I believe. Mm -hmm. But uh, he used to uh, manage the uh, treasury affairs of the Moor Science Temple, you know, and uh, it was something that happened where Noble Drew Ali had snatched his wife away and he got jealous or something. Mm -hmm. And so uh, he warned Noble Drew Ali that he was going to report, you know, the nation of Islam's financial corruption to the federal government. 
And uh, what happened was the Moor Science Temple ended up killing him at the uh, orders of Nobudur Ali. Then after that, Nobudur Ali got arrested and that's when he died in prison. Or that's that's what they the story how the story go. Mm. But <clears throat> on other accounts, I also hear it there is say it is said that other Moorish Americans also killed Nobudur Ali. But mm. neither here the less um you know um it was this like I said, this secretary treasury, he was the treasurer of the Moor Science Temple. And uh, you know he was uh, he 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 spilled the beans on Nobudrali and them. Um, you know, saying how Nobudrali was living lavish, mm-hmm. how Nobudrali always liked to dress lavish and stuff and and everything, and and how he was uh that's how he was getting his money was through you know donations and all that to, for the, for the uh, more Science Temple of America, and he was able to. That's how he was able to live lavish and do what he was doing, you know, and all that good stuff. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and uh, you know, uh, the Secretary of Treasury put it out there and uh, they ended up, like I said, killing him, you know, because mm. he was putting their organization on blast. And eventually it led to no drawly, uh, you know, incarceration well as his death. You know, so like I said, um, you know what I'm saying? From the head on down, if you look at corruption in the organization, you got to look at the head. You start with the head, then it goes down. You see what I'm saying? So how in the hell is Islam helping black people? And then you got to remember them two organizations, the Moor Science Temple of America, especially the Nation of Islam, is not even recognized by the rest of the mainstream of Islam throughout the world. They'll tell you that in a minute in, in, in the, uh, you know, in the secular Islam world that they don't even recognize those two organizations. You know what I'm saying? Just like. The uh, Caucasian Masonic uh, temples don't recognize the black Masonic temples. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So anything that we do in this country is is not even considered a carbon copy of what the white man or the Arab set up (laughs) to do. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, you know, at least in Christianity, they uh sometimes uh you know uh they they give us a black pope or some or or, or right. black uh a black uh cardinal or something like that you know what I'm saying but but in Islam you you know we ain't really we ain't even recognized like that you know what about them countries over there in in uh, Iraq Iran you got a lot of black people over there actual dark skinned people with woolly hair and dark skin. They not even in high political positions. You don't see that too much, very rarely, except for places like uh, Iraq and uh, Saudi Arabia. But the most of the part is they don't they they hate the dark skinned populations over there. Like I told you, it was a Saudi Arabian brother. I thought he was from Africa, but they are this just that dark. And they mm. told me, man, that they actually still got slavery going on in that country. So, I mean, you know what I'm saying? And then you have people like Nobu Drali uh, and, 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 and uh, I think Clans 13X of the 5% Nation of Islam and uh, Elijah Muhammad who made pilgrimages over to Mecca. Mm-hmm. Not even aware that slavery of dark-skinned people was going on in that country at the time. Even when Malcolm X went over there on his pilgrimage. They, they didn't take him to the places where they was uh, enslaving blacks at in those certain parts of uh, Saudi Arabia. You see what I'm saying? So, uh, I mean, you know, you, you got to understand and wake up and realize and, 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 and see that Islam has not done nothing to help black people. I mean, you know what I'm saying? You still got these Arab immigrants from different countries like Lebanon, Yemen. Uh, Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Iran. 
that still look at us as slaves right here in America and would <laughs> tell you to your face that you a slave or that you come from slaves. Mm. I've had it done to me mm. in the Dearborn, Michigan area, where it's a lot of Arabs at based in, in this country. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So don't 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 sit up there and, 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 and tell people that Islam is helping blacks. They do not care nothing about us. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. I remember when it was a it was a brother. It was a brother. Uh, he was an imam that I was uh, under in the local mosque in Detroit years ago, and um, of course, the government assassinated him. Okay, and uh, he was connected with brothers like uh, Jamil El Amin, aka. Right, H. Rap Brown. And when they killed them, the, the Arab American Muslim community didn't really show no concern. And he was dealing, he had a lot of inner dealings with them in that community because of the fact that they were Orthodox Sunni. But of course, when they went to his janazah in Arabic, that's what funeral means, janazah. Okay, when they went to his janazah, who did you have speaking, giving the keynote speak at his uh, janazah? Louis Farrakhan. That's how much they looked at this brother. He was more of a true Sunni Muslim or Muslim than Farrakhan, whatever be. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But these Arabs wasn't there giving no keynote speeches at his janazah. Matter of fact, when I went around them and talked to them about it, they act like they didn't really care because he was a dark skinned so-called Negro American. That's how they look at us. When we even greet them, even when we talk, greet African uh, Orthodox Sunni Muslims, like even here where I live at, you know, when we greet them in the uh, Arabic tongue of as Assalamu Alaikum, you know what they say to us? How you doing in English? <laughs> That's how much they look at us. So, so how 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 you gonna how you gonna sit up there? How you gonna sit up there and tell black people that Islam tried to help them? If that was the case, then how come the Moroccans who made that treaty, the same ones that taught no Drew Ali that foolishness, that we were descendants of Morocco? How come during the time when they signed that treaty with George Washington and they knew we was enslaved over here, how come they ain't do nothing about it then? Mm. See what I'm saying? See, we got to, we got to, we got to stop. We got to stop this foolishness. People, you know what I'm saying? You know, getting in, in, intertwined with these fictitious religions that has not never done us no good, exactly. if anything, but has further enslaved us even more than Christianity has. You see what I'm saying? So when you get to talking all this crap about, you know, Islam uh, is going to save us, Islam. Well, 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 if, like I said, if you tell the nation Islam or bring this, these facts to the nation Islam about why these Muslim countries like Iran, Iraq can't get it together, like Yemen and Saudi Arabia, where millions of people are starving to death because of war and all this other kind of stuff. You know what they're going to tell you? Well, that was the old Islam. <laughs> this is why, and you, and you know that, brother, uh, Angel Snub Snub Seven, mm. because you was in there, you know? Mm. You know that's what they teach, you know? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? They, they, they teach you, well, that's the old Islam. Right. That's why Elijah Muhammad came to give us the new Islam. Wait a minute. Who gave Elijah Muhammad the authority mm. to pass on the new Islam? This nigga couldn't even stop raping little girls. Mm. But you, you, you finna sit up and tell me that he got the authority by being divinely anointed to bring in a new so-called form of Islam? Really? Well, how about this? The man fought Muhammad, who was actually uh, 
whose true identity was revealed as time went on was the one that taught him orthodox Islam because he was an orthodox Muslim. Mm -hmm. The same man that you saw at his funeral standing over his casket, that Arab looking man, that was Master Far Muhammad. That was standing over his casket in February 1975 when he died. You see what I'm saying? So, I mean, we got to understand and wake up people, you know, to, 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 to these uh, frivolous teachings in this false ideology that mm -hmm. has had our minds so twisted for so long. Yes. You know, and with that said, that's all I just want to pass on because you 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 know we this is why we 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 so all over the place disconnected can't unify on nothing on no real common cause that would deliver us from this uh hell that we in here in America you know so uh I mean you know we really need to understand that uh right now the position that we're in you know uh and caught up in we really ain't got no time for debating and all that. We need to get to freedom and then we can worry about debating each other over religion because we're not in no position right now. We're not free, mm -hmm. as many of us think. You see what I'm saying? So, I mean, you know, uh, you, you, you know, uh, it don't make no difference. What, what did he say? Because my eyes can't see clear. What, 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 what did he say? American Negroes like staying in the Matrix. Yeah, well, that's part of it, too. That's part of it, too, you know? Yeah, that's part of it, too. You know, because all that stuff we've been taught over the years about yeah. we're uh, the gods <laughs> of, the, of, the, of the earth and the universe and all this kind of stuff. And, Star Trek teaching. And, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and all this and, and the mother plane is going to come and drop <laughs> bombs on America and all this crap. Uh, <laughs> you know, what, what then, how come it ain't dead by now? They said the white man's rule was supposed to end in 1914. And that's almost 100 years ago. Matter of fact, this is 98 years. Mm -hmm. I can't see no evidence of that. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So, I mean, uh, <clears throat> I mean, we got to wake up and understand. You know, when we following these teachings, we got to understand and, and, and be able to uh, discern what the trickery is that's 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 that's, that's coming into this play. Uh, you know, that got us so uh, you know twisted. And, and delusional, you know what I'm saying? And as one would say, in the matrix, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, we got to understand and wake up, uh, you, you know, that and, and realize that <laughs> we are in a very uh, retarded situation. I usually yeah. don't like to use that word because yeah. it's very offensive, but I, I just got to put that out there. That's what where we at right now, you know, in the in, in, uh, the the whole the, the the truth is of the matter is is that uh if we don't uh, get it together we may be on the uh, brink of actual extermination as those who you call the enemy or the devil have planned for us <laughs> and with that said brother uh, I'm gonna pass the mic back and thanks again for letting me speak you are, you are peace always, always peace and respect you too um. On that note, we're going to go ahead and close this, this program out. I really enjoyed myself. I, I hope that you enjoyed what Brother Talib brought to the table also. And again, I, I'm not here to offend nobody or make folks feel bad and, and, you know, or whatever. That's not the point here. We have to deal with things realistically. We always say here, except reality, my friend, is much easier. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's better to accept the truth and reality in the long run. Feeling good and avoiding the truth or whatever, you can get over for a little while, like a like hundred years, like what Nation of Islam and more Science Temple have given us. You can feel good for a hundred years, but eventually 
it's going to run out. Christianity, all these different things, all this stuff is going to run out. They can only go so far. Thousands and hundreds of years, how long are you going to wait to get that tooth, that toothache dealt with? How long are you willing to wait? And I know our brother Corey is a pro nation of Islam uh, person. I don't know if, if he if he is with Minister Farrakhan or not to just support that. I would just say I would just say to Brother Corey, how much time do you need? And you write in comments in this in the section blaming the people, but you're not blaming the nation of Islam. You're not blaming the people, the the the. The, the nation of Islam, Louis Farrakhan, and the Muslims who have been around for 100 years and they have failed in their mission. You're, not, you're going to blame the people. You've done nothing for the people and you've done nothing for yourself. What has the nation of Islam done for itself? Nothing. 100 years. Excuse making. The nation of Islam murdered their greatest helper. Stupid as hell. That goes to show you how dumb they are. You're going to turn around and kill the man that put you on the map. That's stupid as hell. But that's what they've done. And the more science temple is no better, infighting and killing each other, envy and jealousy, you have not grown above those things. You want to blame black folks, but you have not grown, you're not mature, you have not done nothing for yourself. Hey, Gloria. Gloria wants to add to the conversation. A, a problem with Muslims is their inbreeding as a result of their long and deeply ingrained practice of marrying first cousins, a practice that has been prohibited since the days of Moses. Arabs transported Saharan slaves as, as slavery was well established when the region fell to the Mali and Songhai empires in the 5th and 17th century. Why would we want to be associated? It's just like, if you try to get something off, why would you want to be associated with Adolf Hitler? Why would you want to be a part? You can create your own type of religion. You can say it's revised or based on Islam. Why would you want to be part of the Arab world and all that, that madness and stuff? Why would you want to even be part of all that? But see, that's the ultimate goal for them is to become part of the Orthodox Islam or the Arab world because that is them. That's their religion. You can't tell those people about their religion. Brother Corey talking about the nation of Islam does not recognize Orthodox Islam. It doesn't matter. You are you you stole that, you plagiarized, that's you revised their, their religion. How the hell you got the nerve to talk about? I don't recognize Orthodox Islam. Well, that's, that's the stuff that you got. That's their Quran. It was written in Arabic, given to an Arab 1,400 years ago. Where were you at? The so-called Negro wasn't even born, didn't even exist 1,400 years ago. You got their leftovers and hand me down. Corey's still in the chat room. Making excuses for the nation of Islam. He can do that. It does not change the reality of things. And that's our problem. We don't want to accept the reality of life. We don't want to accept the reality of things. Exactly. Elijah Muhammad was not righteous. He was exploiting his own female followers. He didn't give a damn about the feelings of his wife because I'm doing this for God. What's righteous about that? Sister Clara did not sign up for polygamy. And then you're going to turn around and didn't tell her nothing, sneaking around. What's righteous about that kind of behavior? What's righteous about it, Corey? What about Sister Clara Muhammad's feelings? She didn't sign up for polygamy. What about Khadija Muhammad's feelings now that we know Farrakhan cheated on her? Yeah. They don't care. It's all about the men. 
It's all about the men and what the men want, what the men do. Who gives a damn if you hurt a woman's feeling? <laughs> but, you know, you're going to have people that, that believe and hang with that stuff forever. They're not going to change. They don't care if it never gives nothing. Elijah Muhammad say, said in his teachings, why do the Negro love the devil? Because he gives them nothing. We love the Moorish Science Temple because it gives us nothing. We love the Christian church because it gives us nothing. I just made a video in response to Florida Evans and, and at Good Times, the Black Jesus Show. And they gave Black Jesus all those problems. But Black Jesus was actually giving the Evans family something. Why Jesus never gave the Evans family nothing. But that's how we are. We love those who mistreat us and give us nothing. The Black Jesus was blessing the Evans family. And Florida Evans had a problem with that. And white Jesus been with them forever and where they at in the project scrounging around barely making it but that's how we are we love those who don't mean us no good contrary to popular belief there are some women who actually think that there's a problem if that man is not busting up busting her upside the face Abuse is love in their eyes. Some of us think that love, that abuse is love and caring. If you don't push me in the face, you don't love me. There are people who are like that. There are people in relationships, if there's no drama, they don't think they're in a relationship. They got to have drama and arguing and fighting and hate. Otherwise, they don't feel they're in a relationship. I can't do that. And we're not going to entertain that today because this is Easter. And uh, we're going to go ahead and close this one out. I thank you again for joining us this afternoon. I enjoyed myself. I enjoyed what Brother Talib had to bring and everybody in the chat room, the comments, and everybody in the chat room had to bring to the conversation. Shout out to our Facebook family. It's very difficult because this broadcast is simulcast. It's difficult for me to keep an eye on Facebook and YouTube at the same time. So I, I apologize always to my Facebook people. Facebook, shout out to Facebook. Shout out to those who are listening and those who will be listening to this broadcast at a later date, later time. I appreciate you. Thank you for giving me some of your time. And until next time, as Don Cornelius used to always say, as in parting, I wish us love, peace, and soul. And we are Audi 5000. Peace.